Hello crafty friends, welcome to the all new Rustic Charm Release Video Hop. I am Amy of Sevens Crafts, sharing five cards I made using some of the items from the release. These cards use a colorway reminiscent of the 1950s. Pastels, mints, pinks, and aquas with chrome and gold. Color helps to set the mood and to tell a story. When using color as a design element, I like to build a color board like this, where I swatch out the color and add the name. The Altenew inks I chose to represent the feel of the 1950s are Minty Mint and Sweet Leaf, Dew Drops and Aqualicious, Frosty Pink and Coral Berry, Cool Grays from the Rock Collection set, as well as platinum and antique gold embossing powders. All the cards in this video are holiday cards with a retro feel. I'm highlighting different backgrounds I made using these cards because I like trying out different colorways to spice up holiday cards. The first background is made from the All is Bright background stamp. This is a large background stamp of a string of lights and filaments. There are four different bulbs you can add to the string of lights to get a different feel. I stamped this using embossing ink and then sprinkled platinum powder over it. The All is Bright stamp set comes with four different types of light bulbs. I used all the different bulbs, round, oval, pointed, and star to give a feel of the large light bulbs from the 1950s. To recreate the retro multicolored light strands of that time, I stamped the bulbs in Coral Berry, Peach Perfect, Aqualicious, and Sweet Leaf inks. Because these are dye inks, they are translucent, so the platinum embossed filament shines through. I then turned up the shine with a shimmer pen. This is hard to see in the video, but the shimmer is very, very shiny. To maximize using this background, I made a gatefold card base by taking a piece of eight and a half by five and a half inch paper and scoring it at two and an eighth of an inch from each side. I then cut the All is Bright panel to two two and eighths of an inch by five and a half inch panels. I use a ruler to measure to make sure the design continues on each side of the gatefold panel. I decided to make a gatefold card from this background because it is a funky and different card design and the 1950s were all about stretching and modernizing design. As I adhere the panels, I'm taking care to make sure the design on the two panels light up, line up. I then made a belly band to close the gatefold card by cutting a piece of black cardstock to three quarter inch width and scoring it and folding it along the gatefold card base. I added a sentiment to the belly band by stamping Merry and Bright from the All is Bright stamp set using embossing ink and then platinum embossing powder. I like the platinum embossing powder because it gives a warmth but yet is a neutral that will tone down the brightness of the lights. The belly band fits snug, but not too snug, around the gatefold card so the recipient can easily take it off. Just a bit of tape keeps the belly band in place. I love the shine on this card and the whimsy from the bright colors and the string of lights. The next background is made from paper piecing. The mid-century cover die reminds me of a cool retro wallpaper pattern. I used it to cut a piece of white paper. After removing all of the little tiny bits, I adhered this white frame to one side of a piece of Altenew adhesive sheets. I did this by partially removing the backing, adhering the top part of the white frame slowly tacking the piece down and then using the backing to make sure the white piece is really firmly 
set and stuck down. I then use the die to cut out pieces from a piece of mint, pink, and aqua cardstock scraps from my stash. I kept these pieces in their own separate piles and pieced them to the white frame. Since I'm using the adhesive sheet, I do not need to add adhesive to each piece, which really speeds up this process. Having a tool to pick up the pieces and help to secure them to the backing also really helps. These colors and patterns remind me of the inside of a 1950s diner. Even though this process looks time consuming, it is a very easy process to complete and with all the extra pieces I have left over, I can make a few backgrounds at a time switching up the patterns of these colors. This bright pattern will really set off some gray holiday images from the mid-century festivity stamp set. The mid-century festivity stamp set has so many cool retro holiday images from a tree, ornaments, gifts, and even a stamped layered chair. In this card, I'll be using the chair and the tree. The chair is stamped first in limestone ink with the legs in pure graphite ink and the detailed layer in industrial diamond ink. You can feel the soft velour texture of this chair. I also stamp the tree in its base in limestone and then pure graphite inks. The sentiment is stamped in limestone, the border in graphite, and the sentiment in antique gold embossing powder. To make this tree look like one of the white aluminum trees from the 1950s, I added sequins from my stash in pink, green, and blue. This card is retro perfection. One of the stamps in the mid-century festivities stamp set is a rounded rectangle that can be turned sideways or used straight up and down to resemble a gift. This little stamp is the perfect size to make a background by repeating the same stamp over and over. To make this pattern, I started with the rounded rectangle in the upright position and stamped it in dew drops in the middle of the card. I then built a pattern by stamping the same rectangle in different colors above and below the first rectangle. I used an acetate sheet of grid paper to help me line up the gifts horizontally and vertically. I was able to get four gifts in each column with three full and one partial gift. When building a pattern, I like to have the pattern go off of the paper to help the eye see the continuation of the pattern. I stuck with my color pattern of pink, blue, and green to give this card a soft and 1950s retro feel. The blue gifts are stamped in dewdrops and aqualicious. The green in minty mint and sweet leaf and the pink in frosty pink and coral berry. I repeated the pattern throughout the background. On either side of the tall gifts, I turned the rounded rectangle to make wide gifts and used the shorter ribbon with the same bow on these gifts. To add a bit of shine, I went over each ribbon with a shimmer pen. I couldn't quite find the best card base color for this panel, so I made my own by blending minty mint, dew drops, and frosty inks along the edges of a card base with the Altenew small ink blending tool. The sentiment was made the same as the previous card with limestone and pure graphite inks and antique gold embossing. Small sequins from Altenew antique gold statement sequins give extra shine to the gifts. I love the fun and playful pattern of this card and the colors give this card a retro feel.
One of the best items from the Rustic Charms release is the Shattered Cubes Builder Stencil. Depending on how you rotate the stencil, you can get so many different looks. For this card, I use Dew Drops in Minty Mint in the first pass of the stencil. This stencil works by inking, rotating the stencil 90 degrees, and then inking again. This is repeated four times to make a cube. For the outer cube, I used dew drops, rotated the stencil, used minty mint, and then repeated this again. When rotating the stencil, make sure the cube edges line up. The more the edges do not line up, the more shattered the cube looks. The inner cube is made from stencil number two. The second stencil is lined up, making sure the middle is inside the outer cube. I first blended Aqualicious inks. I then rotated the stencil and used Sweet Leaf ink. I repeated this again until the inside cubes were all filled with color. Stencil one and two together with the mint and aqua inks makes for a really cool vintage look. I stamped four ornaments from the mid-century festivity stamp set in coral berry and then used clear embossing powder to add shine. To make the ornament hangers, I took a piece of one inch gold foil washi tape, adhered it to a piece of paper and cut out a quarter inch strips. I attached those strips to the top of the ornaments. I wanted the ornaments to look like mercury glass ornaments from the 1950s. So I added a large sequin from the antique gold statement sequins and filled it in with glossy accents. The Marion Bright sentiment is from the mid-century festivity stamp set is an embossed in antique gold powder. I love the bright coral mercury glass ornaments against the pastel background for this retro card. The final background in this series comes from another great product from this release, the Layered Snowflakes 3D Embossing Folder. I like using embossing folders as backgrounds as they add so much detail. This embossing folder embosses snowflakes of different shapes and sizes. And in this design, I like how there is an open space to add a sentiment. I embossed a six by six piece of white paper. I then inked up the snowflakes with dew drops and minty mint inks. I lightly added color with the Altenu small blending tools to make sure I preserve the detail of each snowflake. Dew drops is a very light color. So I keep going over and over the snowflakes to build the color up. After adding the dew drops, I then add the minty mint, taking care to go diagonally along the paper and blend the dew drops into the minty mint, which is a little bit darker. I then turned the paper over and inked the top of the panel in the same way. I cut the piece down to four inches by five and a quarter inches and added the same merry and bright sentiment from the mid-century festivity stamp set, stamping first in embossing ink and then using antique gold embossing powder to make it really stand out. I sprinkled antique gold embossing powder over the snowflakes for extra shine. I added a leftover ornament from the last card to add some bright color to this delicate background. To that ornament, I added a large sequin to recreate the look of a mercury glass ornament. Small sequins placed over some of the snowflakes round out the retro look. Thank you so much for joining me today to explore color in holiday cards. I'd love to hear your comments below on the cards today.